Hello guys, this is Philip, and today I'm going to talk to you about generic programming in C Sharp. So what is generic programming? Basically, it's when structures and algorithms are written in the terms of to be specified later. And this means that you create your algorithms with the types that you don't always know when you create your structures or algorithms. I'm going to show you a couple of demos regarding this later on. The other big part is that you're going to be able to reuse your code in a different manner than you could before. So if you, for example, look at the list of T or the I enumerable of T, you see that these are reusable structures that use the, the generic approach. I'm going to show you how you had to solve these kind of uh, problems before we had generics in C Sharp. So why would you want to use generics in C Sharp? First of all, it's going to give you less error prone applications. We don't want the, the, the non-generic types like array list anymore because using these uh, could give us a lot more errors than we wanted to. And it's going to give us less noise in our code because we no more need any explicit conversions. I'm going to show you this as well. I'm going to show you an example of where I use an array list and then when I want to use the objects, I need to cast these objects. There are some pitfalls there that you have to be aware of. So when working with generics, we, we're going to come across the, this T character here. And the T tells us that the type or the algorithm or the method is generic type. So T is actually short for template, which from the beginning comes from C++. So I'm going to show you a demo here. So what I've done here is that I've created a C Sharp console application. And the first thing that I'm going to show you is one of the, the old ways to store objects in a collection. So I'm going to be importing a system dot collection. And then I'm going to create a class person. And this person is going to have a property of type string. And then I'm going to create a couple of persons here. And I'm going to use the array list, which is not a generic type. So this is going to be how we did this uh, before .NET 3.5. So I'm going to add a couple of persons. As you can see here that the add method for my person's array list here takes an object. So I'm going to create a new person. So what I have here now is that I've got an array list here with two persons in it. I've got Philip and Don to illustrate that this actually works and that I have two persons inside my array list. I'm going to create a new method that's going to process each of my persons. So for each person in persons. I'm going to just print out the, the name of the person. All right, so this is the first problem we have here. As this is just an object, because we don't know what type is actually stored inside our person's collection here, I do have to cast my person to get the, the correct properties that are on my object here. So if I try to process my persons here, I should get two lines where it says Philip and Don. And I did. So this works quite well. And the problem lies when I try to add something to my array list here, that's not actually supposed to be added there. So let's say that I have another class here, class, uh, mammal and this uh, this uh, mammal got a 
uh, gender. And then I add a new mammal to my collection. So what what's going to happen here now is that it's going to try and try to process my persons and it's going to cast each person in my array list here. And when it comes to my my mammal here, it's going to give us a runtime exception because it cannot cast this to a person. So we got an exception here, evaluate cast exception, unable to cast objects of type mammal to type person. And this is one of the biggest problems that people had before generics. You could often see that applications broke because of invalid casts. So if I were to use generics here instead, I would instead of just importing collections, I would say import the generic collections. And instead of using an array list, I would use a list of T, which says that this list here is actually a generic list. And in my list here, I'm going to specify that I'm going to store persons. And then I need to, to say that when I process my persons, I expect to get a list of persons. And as you can see here now that when I try to add the mammal to my person's to my person's collection, it's going to give me a, an error here. It's going to say that the mammal is not assignable to the parameter type person. And if I try to compile this, I'm going to get an error here. So what I need to do now here is that I, I need to remove this line here because I cannot add this to my to my collection. And if I compile this now, it should compile just fine. One other thing that I can actually remove now is this, this cast here. I no longer have to say that this is a person because my collection here is strongly typed as a person. So if I compile this and run this, it should say Philip and Don, and it did. So I didn't really have to change that much to adapt to the generic types and what I gained is that I no longer have to worry about the the runtime exceptions when I try to add some type to my list that is actually not possible to process in my application. So this is just one of the the ways that you can use generics and where we've seen generics being used. So another thing that you can do here with generics is that let's say that my person here derived from mammal and that I that I know that I want to process my mammals instead of processing my my persons. So I could say that this this collection here will store mammals and this method will take a list of mammals. And for each mammal I will write out the gender. As you can see, I'm adding persons to my collection of mammals. And because my person is a type, is a derived type from mammal, this is going to work. And it's going to say that both my, my persons are of gender male. One thing that you, you won't be able to do is if I were to change this collection of mammals to the collection of persons, the only error that I would get is when I try to process my persons because it's not going to accept a collection of persons when it expects a collection of mammals. Even though the, the person here derives from the mammal, it's not going to work. So I'm going to show you how you create a... So to start off, you need to create a, a class here and I'm going to call this class my generic type and this generic type will have some sort of some sort of type associated with it and I could use this 
this object inside my class here, even though I do not know the type of it, I could say that my generic type is going to be stored as a member variable and in my constructor I could say that I want to take an a T here and I'm going to associate my member variable with this object that I sent in here and then I'm going to have um, a method here that processes this this type and print something out about it. And inside my process method here, I'm going to print all the values on my properties using reflection. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to say var properties is equal to type of t get properties for each or property in my properties collection property dot get value And I'm going to print this to my controller. So if I instantiate this class here, my generic type, first of all, I'm going to need a, a type here. So I'm going to create a, a person here again. And my person is going to have a property string name. And then I'm going to create a new person. Then I'm going to create a new generic type of person and I'm going to send my person object in here and then I'm going to process this type and let's see what happens now. It printed Philip. So what I could do here is that I could all also write the property name. and the property value. And let's see if this works. All right, so the property name is name and the value is Philip. So as you can see here, it actually took my, my type here and it's processing each of the the correct types properties. And this is one way that you can use generics to create your own generic implementations of algorithms or structures. And the list of T is just one of the examples of the generic types in, in, in .NET. You have the innumerable of T, you have action of T. So you have a lot of different generic classes and structures and algorithms in the .NET framework, but if you want to create your own, this is the way that you do it. And most of you will maybe only use the innumerable of T and the list of T. But if you want to create generic and reusable libraries, you will definitely look deeper into the generics of .NET. So I hope you guys learned something today and I want to thank you for watching and tune in for more videos on C-Sharp development.